Closing is always easy when you're in Cardone U. We role play with Grant Cardone's team. They know just what to do. They're always there to support us. We couldn't ask for more. On our way in the right direction, we found what we're looking for. In FLC, in FLC, closing is better with appointment setters. You better believe we're not a team but a family. We work together in harmony. We are devoted, and that you can quote me. In FLC. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the FLC Hangout, where your freedom lifestyle begins. Today, we have a very, very, very special guest, Mel in the house. Hello. I'm so excited. This, the, the topic we have today is kind of discipline, discipline in success, motivation, business, entrepreneurship, all of the above. And if anyone knows about discipline, it is this guy. Uh, you'll find out why in just a second. So you have to keep watching. But yes, before we get started, make sure you are following us all on Instagram. They are on the screens now and in the descriptions below. And yeah, I'm I'm so excited. So I want to get straight into it. So Misty, without further ado, over to you. <laughs> Thank you, Jesse. Hey guys, I'm so super excited to be able to be here again, be with you guys. Um, Mel, we're so excited to have you here. You know, it's been a while since you've been able to be on because you were away for a while and we missed you so much and we couldn't wait to get you on here. We know that you're so powerful and can bring so much um, knowledge and, you know, impact to everybody. So we're just going to jump right in because, you know, well, first of all, um, yeah, get your pens and pa papers because this guy's freaking amazing. Excuse me. I'm just so excited. Um, <laughs> you're going to want to write down everything this guy says. So Seb, Seb uh, Mel, before, I'm sorry, before I ask you your first question, uh, you want to give us a little rundown on who you are and what you do? Yes, yes. So I'm Missy and Josie's partners in FLC, and we're a team. So yeah, I'm just really grateful to be on today's Hangout. and. Also, the sales manager in our team. So, we really are, are about the discipline and about really helping people to create their freedom lifestyle. And I don't have much to say, really. I'm just excited to, to see what these these girls have to bring today. And ah. I'm just here to participate. Yeah. Let's go. And um, by the way, can I just say that? Mel, if anyone doesn't know, Mel is in the core family too. So make sure you follow this guy. Um, yeah, Misty, go ahead. Yeah. Um, so Mel, how did being in the army help your discipline? And what strategies or techniques do you still use today in, in business, in your everyday life? And how important are those? Okay. It's a, definitely a very good question. And I would say that being in the army is not easy, first of all. And but you crushed it. I'm like, oh my God, sorry to interrupt you, but oh my God. If you guys don't know, Mel was in the army for four months. And not only was he in the army, he was completely went beast mode beforehand and kept it going throughout the entire time. He was in the army being very disciplined and doing what he had to there and doing everything with FLC as well. So he would get up an hour earlier than everybody else in the army to be on FLC, making his calls, doing his stuff. Freaking legend. Go ahead, Mel. Sorry to interrupt you there. Thank you, Misty. Thank you. And I would say the army definitely has helped me a lot, but at the same time, I've always been a pretty disciplined person. And just having like a daily schedule and just sticking to certain things that I need to do every single day. So we always have like non-negotiables, right? That will actually set up our day for success. And this is 
kind of like something that we talk a, talk a lot about with the Cardone team as well is having our daily non-negotiables. And I don't exactly remember the word that they use for it, but it's basically like making sure your diet is straight, making sure you get your sleep right, making sure you exercise, right? Writing down your goals. But these are just very basic things. But if you do it consistently every single day, it's really going to change your life and allow you to build that momentum. And it doesn't matter if you're in business or if you have any kind of career, this is always going to help you to better your life. And I think one of the main things that the army has really helped me is to have that discipline to actually do those non-negotiables non every single day, mm -hmm. which most of us don't actually do, right? Even though it's so simple. Yeah. Yeah. That's so true. I love what you said about non-negotiables because there's certain things that you should or like have to do in the morning to set yourself up for the day because there is such a difference between just waking up and like snoozing your alarm over and over and waking up slowly scrum going your phone da, 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 and then trying to start your work day then waking up on time doing whatever if you exercise in the morning have your exercise have a good breakfast do this, have a structure and then start your work day, there is a massive difference in what you're going to see results wise. Right. So yeah, I love that. And what would you say are some kind of effective strategies for building discipline? I know you were, you were in the army, so you were kind of cold, hard forced into it. So <laughs> is there, do you just kind of have to go for it or do you, would you recommend if you can leaning into it or what would you say? I would, to be perfectly honest, Army was, I would say it was kind of traumatic. Mm. <laughs> and I mean, you can, it could be a good thing or a bad thing. It, mm. I think it depends on how you, how you think about it. Because it could be traumatic in a way where it's just such a huge difference from maybe your everyday life. Mm. Now you're forced to be in the situation where it's, it's stressful and but it also builds character right and it also pushes you to become a better version of yourself so i'm definitely very grateful for the experience not that not that i had a choice obviously <laughs> like I, it was a mandatory experience um and i'm sure some of our audiences as well maybe you're in your country there's you have mandatory as well um I think like Finland or like Israel, Korea, like these are just a few, I think some countries in Europe as well, like Greece, there's a few, just a few countries off the top of my head where it's mandatory, but not to get too sidetracked. Um, it's definitely a very good experience, but it could also be traumatic for people as well, because basically you can't make any mistakes. And if you do, you're going to get yelled at, first of all, and you might actually get in trouble as well. So, wow. it, yeah, it's, you have to be very self-aware in the army of what you're doing, how you act, and that builds the discipline. But at the same time, it could be very emotionally difficult as well. Mm. Yeah. I like, I sorry, I Misty. Understand. Huh? Yeah, I sorry, Misty. I I know you have a question, but I've it's so true. I I just made a post today as well, actually, that was like, don't be so hard on yourself. Um, like <laughs> like maybe the army was hard on you guys, but if you're trying to build that discipline, you're trying to stick to your schedule, and you mess up, don't or not mess up. Seb would say you have a what does he say a growth day, um, instead of like a bad day, um don't be so hard on yourself because you're not going to get it perfect first time um so yeah no I love that you said that yeah that was that was awesome um thank you for the insight Mel so mm -hmm. I want to know how okay because 
like you said, in the army, you basically have no choice. You have to do everything right. Otherwise yeah. you get yelled at. But you went above and beyond that. I have to bring that up because you went above and beyond. I mean, like every day that you were on the meetings or you were keeping in contact or you were doing your calls, whatever you were doing, just had everybody in the core family mind blown. It's like, how in the heck is this guy doing this? It's it's completely nuts. And when I say beast mode, he not only went beast mode, he went super saiyan on top of that. So it was like <laughs> all, all out in full force. So what I want, my question is, is if you being in the army and knowing that you have to do everything right in the army and be disciplined as far as that goes, how did you maintain the motivation and the discipline to do, to go above and beyond that and to keep up with your stuff in the FLC as opposed to taking a step back like most people would what was that motivation how did you keep your mo your motivation and if you had a lot were losing that that mo feeling I guess the way yeah. I see the way I see it is that a lot of times when we're faced with challenges that's actually when we need to put on the gas pedal Ooh. and I think yeah. I think Jabaria says this as well, or maybe Grand Cardone, but he says like when when you are in hell, it's just a metaphor. Like obviously we're not in hell, but when you are in hell, in hell, sprint mm -hmm. or like run. You don't want to stay there, right? You want to move, yeah, or get out of there. So I think when you are in that kind of challenging environment, you have to push yourself. Because that is that's why it's gonna help you to grow even more, first of all. And also if it's emotionally difficult in the army, like you you obviously want to do something else that's gonna give you that peace of mind and put your mind off of like all the drama, all the chaos happening around you in the army. And just doing doing sales calls and being on FLC meetings was my like peace of mind. So it mm -hmm. basically kept me through it. army. Yeah, it kept me, kept me grounded. And if I was feeling not at my best in army because it's emotionally difficult, then I know yeah. my, my team, my family is there for me and I get to see them every day on the, on the meeting. So that, that was... It wasn't difficult for me to to be on the meetings and do the sales calls because that was what was driving me to actually do those things was what was actually getting me through everything. Yeah. Wow, I love that. Wow. Yeah, and I was gonna say that's so nice to that's nice to know that. Yeah. Oh, we love you, Mel. <laughs> yeah, there. But I I like. I'm so glad you're on the meetings too because when when you he first went off, um, it was like. So we have we have this thing in the core family for anyone watching. We call each other, we all call each other bro, bro, whatever. Um, and Mel and I are broskies. Um, so when he first left, I was like, my broski's leaving. But then he was always on the meetings anyway, which is was crazy. So yeah, it was really nice. And it's so true that motivation won't always be there, but your why is always should be there you should always remember your why why are you doing this and when the motivation isn't there just fall back onto your why and fall back onto the discipline and the good habits that you've created for yourself um right so yeah love that yeah I um, love that and when Mel wasn't there it was really sorry Jesse it was really like okay there's something missing so mm -hmm. when anybody from the core family is not on the meetings or not there, we're like, okay, wait a minute. It's kind of like throws you for a minute. You're like, okay, wait a minute. What's missing? There's, <laughs> there's somebody gone. And then you're counting heads. Who's how many, who's here, who's not, who's supposed to be here. And then you're like, oh, where is he gone? Because, yeah. you know, I don't know about you, Josie, but I learned something from Mel every day. Every day that we're on the, the meetings. I mean, this guy is like phenomenal. Everybody in the core family is. But this guy is like, he he I don't want to say does everything by the book but he goes above and beyond the book and makes it his own and makes it to where he can understand it and I really love that because that helps me out a lot and lets me know that okay what you're doing is important and you can follow the book 
but let's make it personal to you too. So it kind of resonates a little more with you, right? Am I wrong with that or am I completely, because that's what I get from him. I mean, I get that and plus a ton more, but yeah. Absolutely. I don't know if you're asking me or Mel, but I agree. <laughs> and either one, it's somebody. <laughs> yeah. No, because it's, sorry, Mel, I'll let you speak in a second. But <laughs> <laughs> it's one thing to know what you should do and build the habits and build the discipline, but learning all these tips from someone else isn't always going to 100% work for you in the same way it did for someone else. So take other people's tips and personalize it to yourself and the only way you're going to be able to do that is by trying it right so yeah I don't know what what are your thoughts on that now it's male appreciation today <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys so much and I think for me I could also be a perfectionist as well and there's good, there's good things about it, but there's also downsides about it. I think there's, it's really just about balance. And that's something that I'm working on as well. Like if I were to follow everything by the book, right? I also sometimes being a perfectionist can also stop you. And if you're able to let things flow a bit more and be less attached, but at the same time, having that discipline, I think we can go further. We can do even more because of that. And Absolutely. that's definitely something that I'm working on as well because I'm a perfectionist. Mm -hmm. That's so true. And that actually, sorry, Misty, did you go ahead? No, go ahead. I don't have okay. any. You're good. Okay. That actually leads me on really nicely to my next question that was how... So you, you talked about you want to be kind of flexible when you, but you still want to have that discipline. So how can you balance the discipline with kind of being flexible and staying, make sure, making sure that you're staying on the right track to success, but also being open to opportunities and changes? Kind of how, is there a balance there? How do you do? Yeah, there's definitely a balance. Even throughout my day, I have balance. I don't just work all day. Well, first of all, I have my non-negotiables, right? And the, those will really set up my day for success. I have more energy. Like if you eat right, exercise, sleep right, you're, if you have your energy down, like you feel good, and then you'll be motivated because if you're lethargic or tired, then you don't want to do anything. But if you feel good, then you have a good attitude and you'll be motivated to do the things that you need to do. So yeah, having the non-negotiable is definitely very important. And also just doing little things throughout the day that help you to regain your energy. So mm -hmm. for me, I, I really like reading as well. And I also play like the piano. So like I, it's kind of like break for me. Like I'll read, or maybe I play play piano, or for example, maybe even like taking a nap. Like there's definitely need to be a balance there, and not just work, 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 discipline, 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 because that's not gonna work. And I've tried that, and I've crashed as well. And yeah. I'm definitely human and not invincible. <laughs> And <laughs> so I would say just having little things throughout the day that help you reground yourself and get back to that place where you're motivated and you can keep going. So I wanted to ask you, Mo, you, you talk about your non-negotiables and those would be things that help set up your day. Do you find that doing those having that routine and having that non-negotiables and setting to set up your day and, and your energy and everything to kind of crush your day do you find that that frees up time and you accomplish more when you do that as opposed to just just getting up and doing whatever you mean do, after doing the non-negotiables do you feel like yeah it actually helps me yeah yeah definitely because if I don't do those things, I'm not going to feel motivated. 
Mm-hmm. Well, at least true. I think I think that motivation actually comes from within. Like it wouldn't, I would still be motivated. So that's probably not the right way to put it. But I would still be not motivated even if I didn't do my non-negotiables because the, you're right. Like what Josie said is, is big. But if you don't do those non-negotiables, then you're not going to be as consistent. You're not going to be as motivated as if you were to actually do them because you feel you feel better and yeah. you can have more energy. Yeah. Mm. It's, it's definitely so much about how you feel, right? Because it's so much easier to do something you don't really want to do if you feel good then if you feel crappy then you're just gonna you're gonna use that as an excuse to not do what you really should be doing right so like definitely in my um my experience too having a strong morning routine I'm still working on my nighttime routine um (laughs) a strong morning routine sets me up for the day so much better than if I just do whatever I want in the morning and just make sure that I'm starting work by nine let's say um so yeah definitely um I was I'm also curious this is kind of slight slightly on topic slightly off topic what was your kind of routine in the army like what did you when did you wake up what did you have to do how did you fit everything in I don't think we've actually really properly talked about that yeah do you mean like my routine plus what I have to do with FLC like how did that work together yeah 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 so I I remember you being on calls and you're like yeah I have to be quiet I'm outside or I can't talk I can listen but I can't talk right now or I can't use the camera or there's always something it's like wow how are you fitting all of this in it's it's so mind-blowing that you were able to do all of that yeah I was I try to you know how like Grant has like the planner and he's like every single hour plans out what he needs yeah. to do so that's like exactly what I did in army and usually I would wake up like at least two hours earlier than people so I get I get up like 4 30 in the morning well not anymore <laughs> because... <laughs> I'm done with that <laughs> oh come on Mel you don't want to join the rest of us hello <laughs> AKA just me. <laughs> yeah, but I would get up like 4.30. Usually people get around, get up around 7 or 6.30-ish because that was actually, um, let me wind back a bit mm-hmm. because that was like the routine towards the end of the army. In the beginning, they were like super strict and like we need to all wake up at like 5 a.m. I was like the in the beginning towards the end we were able to start waking up at like seven because eight o'clock was like the the time to where everyone needed to gather and like sing army army songs and stuff in March it's funny and but I would get up around like 4 a.m and then I actually get straight to my calls first thing in the morning so I do I get the hardest thing done first thing in the morning and then and then usually we need to gather and like clean stuff like clean the whole camp at like 7 a.m something like that and can't remember everything now (laughs) Um, usually I would skip breakfast because even now I don't eat breakfast because that's what like helps me to have that energy in the morning. I feel like if I eat in the morning, it actually makes me tired. And yeah, not to take too long trying to explain the schedule, but we would do like a lot of army stuff morning until until like afternoon Mm. afternoon afternoonish and then we have break time for like one hour so people like sleep and stuff like that 
and then we do like some more army stuff. Usually it's usually it's just like we need to learn certain techniques. We learn, need to learn certain things like around because I was like a rocket, like a rocket soldier. I don't know what, what it's called in English. A like, rocket soldier. Yeah, so we, it's like they have those those they they shoot rockets, right? So we oh, have yeah. to like clean clean the rockets. We need to <laughs> learn how to actually use it and like but we weren't we weren't actually shooting the rockets because it's way too dangerous. Um, but we had to learn everything around that. And there's just so many procedures around it because yeah. it's not like oh you just press the button and then go. Yeah. Fast. I remember, sorry to interrupt, but I remember one day Mel came onto our group chat. We have the the core family and just went, I just learned to throw a grenade. And we we're like, well, yeah. <laughs> we're still talking about ghosts and he's throwing grenades. I wanted to bring up, I think it's mind blowing that he's talking about the hardest part of being there was making his calls. I'm like, you're in the army, you're throwing grenades, you're working out, you're doing like hardcore army stuff. And <laughs> the hardest part was making your calls that's mind-blowing making the calls was the easiest part <laughs> because you were like well at first you're like well i could get the hard stuff over first and i'm like you just got through talking about making <laughs> calls that was that that was the hardest part that's just wow I get, I get it. I do. It's just, that was kind of like, wow, how can that be the hardest part? You're in the army. <clears throat> but yeah, it's definitely a good experience. Yeah. I just can't believe how, how early you woke up and how late you went to sleep just to do the calls and be on the, the meeting. That was crazy. Um, and I feel like, how do I say a lot of people will really go try and go all in right and really push themselves and mel did why well, he was forced to but <laughs> it's like <laughs> since coming out the army have you kind have you taken any any things you learned in there about discipline outside i think the main thing is just a routine mm. yeah yeah it's not like I can shoot guns outside. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's, yeah, that's what I was going for. So that's good. <laughs> I have another question. Wait, I forgot. Yeah, routine. And I, I feel like being in the army really made me into like perfectionist. And I've always kind of been like a perfectionist. And like I said, that's definitely something I'm working on as well. And I feel like I can actually do even more and improve even more if I want such a perfectionist. I don't know if that makes sense. Mm. No, I get you. I'm the same. Yeah. I feel like I can never start something until I know everything about it. Like when I first started doing cold calls, I was like, well, I can't start until I know the script off the back of my hand, upside down in my sleep um, or anything I really do. I feel like it has to be perfect before I start. But really, that's that's the number one way of you're going to keep pushing off your goals. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, I had something to say and I can't remember what it was. It's gone. I had I a question. It. Go for it. So, Mel, you when you started when you first started doing demos, and you were doing demo after demo after demo after demo with like just you or you and Pierre, your guardian angel, or you and Shabaria, and it took, I mean, a lot of them kind of either didn't show up, had bad connection, and I feel like at the, at the beginning it was kind of like punch after punch after punch after punch did that ever kind of knock your confidence down or not knock your confidence down but did it did it make it harder to carry on or was the why so strong that you were just like pow 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 (laughs) (laughs) 
feel like the more you do it, the easier it gets. And mm. the more you it was can definitely not easy. It was definitely not easy. And but I was willing, I was willing to do the work because I knew that at some point it was gonna I will see the results. Mm. And yeah just unattached to the outcome but it was definitely not easy emotionally as well especially when customers don't buy and you're just doing demo after demo where nothing happens but yeah it's definitely built the discipline for sure mm. and I think anything, like I, I think I've said this before, but anything that's worth building, is it doesn't come quick, mm -hmm. and anything that comes quick is not worth. It goes away fast, and it's not worth having. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Did everyone write that yeah. down? <laughs> Go back a few seconds and write that down. So that's I've I've heard you say that before, but it's every time you say it, I'm like, damn. It's so true. Yeah, um, it hits different, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. And I, f I feel like it, it does come down to why, your why, right? And that's what I will tell everyone that comes to me struggling with discipline or struggling with motivation is I'll tell them, have a why and remember your why. Chavaria says that when she goes through some hard things, she'll write down her goals and she'll remember why she's doing everything. Um, and I also really like that you you touched on staying detached because I watched this video um, yesterday, this this other girl's podcast, and she was talking about having a sh like having strong discipline and really going for your goals, but also staying detached. And there was there was a lot of confusion about that in her comments. So I'm actually, I'm curious on your, what you guys think as what you guys think too, is can you, can you work towards your goals and be disciplined and still stay detached from the outcome and kind of how, how do you do that? Open mic. <laughs> I think Josie, what you said about your why is very important and definitely when you're working towards something, you're going to make mistakes. And yeah. it's it's unavoidable, and you're it's impossible to be perfect. But repetition is very important, mm -hmm. and just keep on doing it. But staying staying detached, but not like in a irresponsible way. You're still responsible. You're still going to follow up you're still going to talk to the people that you need to talk to and do what you have to do but like emotionally you're detached from it and I think that that's what makes a huge difference because if you're emotionally attached then you're unable to to see what's in front of you and mm -hmm. be able to move forward and continue on that momentum or just keep going like what's the next thing keep on moving forward right because you're attached you're emotionally attached to maybe a demo or like a client that you talked to like a few minutes ago and like maybe you didn't get the best outcome out of it you didn't get the outcome you wanted but then you're just thinking about that and you're not moving forward because there's so many other people that need your services that need your help and instead of dwelling on what happened before, I, I feel like as long as you did your very best and just move forward. Mm, yeah, I think it's possible to, to be very disciplined and keep going on doing, doing something and having your goals in mind. The only thing is, is that like Mel said, is detaching your emotions from it because when you're emotionally attached to it, you set expectations. 
And then when those expectations don't happen, then you're like, let, you feel like you're let down and then you have a tendency to let go of the discipline or slack off. And if you just keep your discipline, keep going with what you got to do and you detach from it, you're like, I know this is going, me doing this and taking these actions, I know this is going to pay off. I know it's going to come in. I know that I'm going to get the end result I want. I'm just not going to expect it. And then when it does happen, you're like, oh, it actually does work. It actually did come in. I actually does, you know, did get the results I wanted. Or you know what? I did even better. Um, mm. But keeping that, and I think it can be difficult to keep yourself, you know, detached and let it just let, let it go. However, I think that it's if you're focusing on the right things and, and just letting go of the outcome, it's much easier. And, and I think that comes with practice and time. Um, I don't think it's something you're going to completely do right away, but learning to, to detach yourself from things. And that's like, um, that's like with us when we're doing cold calls, right? And we're talking about, Shabari is always telling us, set your intentions, set your intentions before you make the call. So the discipline part is still being active in making the call, knowing what to say, and doing it right and what we want to detach from is the outcome we want to set the intention this is going to be closed this is what but not getting disappointed if it doesn't happen or if somebody says something that kind of um i don't want to say wrong or say something to to kind of deter what you had thought you know it's just it's still detaching from it's like Grant Cardone says um listen to what they say but don't buy into what they're saying pretty much is what I'm getting at so it's like you, you still want to take those actions be the discipline and and doing that and doing what it takes but and knowing that the end result is going to be pay off the way it may not happen exactly the way you want it but the end result is going to pay off just knowing that and letting it happen and not having that attachment to it does that make sense? Yeah. It makes sense yeah. here. <laughs> no, totally. There is, there's, there's such a, there's a fine line, but also such a difference between expectation and intention, right? You can have the intention that if I'm going to use sales because this, this is what we're all in. We're all in sales here. You can have the intention that this deal is going to close. This deal is going to close. This deal is going to close. That is way different than having the expectation this deal is going to close this deal is going to close right one your the expectation you're really disappointed and really upset and deflated when it doesn't happen but if you if that's just your attention intention and you detach from the expectation and the outcome then you're less hurt when it actually doesn't go your way because you know that by keeping discipline and by keeping moving forward eventually you are going to get your way it's just not maybe just not that deal yet until you mm -hmm. follow up <laughs> absolutely yeah so beautiful amazing wonderful people is there anything you would like to say before we close up any well, last that. minute tips comments anything at all I would say go follow, first of all, follow the FOC Hayon, follow Josie and Misty as well. And this is where you're going to get all the gems, all the important tips that's going to help you in your life and in your business. So and help you to create the freedom lifestyle as well. But I would say a lot of the things that we know we need to do that's going to get us the success. It's very simple. And a lot of times I would say it's just because of our emotions that's stopping us from doing these things. And we just have to learn to be okay with those emotions. And the more you do it, the The emotion is definitely, negative emotions will definitely lessen and it will become easier. 
And those negative emotions will then become positive emotions, right? Because you've accomplished something, you've got something done, or you close the deal, and that's going to help you to feel good and build the momentum. I don't know if I've say, said this before, but I think a lot of people, they're, they'd rather be comfortable with what is, what is, I don't know, I don't know if I want to use the word, but um, people, people rather be comfortable with misery than uncomfortable with potential happiness. That makes sense. It does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So say maybe, maybe, maybe you are going on a new diet or maybe you're trying to build a new habit or maybe you're trying to get the relationship that you want. I mean, the perfect partner. A lot of times we sabotage ourselves because we rather be comfortable with what we rather be comfortable with the pain and the misery then maybe be a bit uncomfortable and potentially have future happiness if that makes sense mm -hmm. so maybe some maybe maybe someone that is trying to have better health they rather they, they might self um self sabotage themselves by doing what was comfortable so maybe binge eating then maybe going through a bit of uncomfortability and maybe getting to the results that they want, which is having better health, feeling better. Yeah. Mm. But just like maybe like an example, but yeah. Yeah. So be, I would say my number one tip is be okay with the uncomfortability. Uncom be, be okay with being uncomfortable. Yeah. And that's what's going to tr truly create happiness for you. Instead of going back to bad habits that might be comfortable, but it's actually making you miserable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's such a good tip. And it's, it's so true. The growth is outside your comfort zone, right? Um, I just, I I just want to say, follow Mel. Again, he's, it's, on the, it's on the screen and also in the description. Um, we're all on Facebook too, so check us out there. But yeah, I just wanted to say that motivation won't always be there. Um, and that's when you have to rely on the good habits and discipline that you have built for yourself. Um, and like Mel was saying, some people would rather just settle for what they know now rather than work hard for what could be. Um, I know I've said this on here before, but what What's scarier or what's more uncomfortable? Staying, like, no, going for what you want to do and doing the thing that scares you and making that call, talking to that person, asking them out on a date, whatever it is. Is that scarier or the thought of in 10 years being exactly where you are still right now? Which one, which one's more uncomfortable? And then there you go. I hope answer that for yourself and act on that absolutely wow um thank you guys so much for tuning in today th today's episode of the hangout we hope you found our discussion informative and engaging um, if you enjoyed this episode please consider subscribing to our channel and leaving us a comment with your thoughts and suggestions for future topics um, we value your feedback and we'd love to hear from you also don't forget to like hit the like button and share this video with friends and family who might find it helpful. We want to be sure to get this channel out there to, and help as many people as possible reach their freedom lifestyle. We'll be back with another episode on Sunday, so stay tuned, keep learning. Remember, you are worth more than what you um, are allowing yourself to have. Give up mediocrity, quit procrastination, break up with that, let's get out of there. Um, from all of us here at the FLC, we welcome you, you to the family. We're once your family, your family for life. So we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Thank you. Bye.